Hey there folks, thanks for attending this video, getting started with Microsoft Project Online, and this is the first segment specifying the permission mode, and we're going over this one first because it's kind of important. You really want to specify the permission mode first because if you don't specify it first and you have some settings specified in security, you change it down the road, it will wipe out all previous security settings, right? Um, but before we get there, I just want to go over a couple things that you may want to consider setting up in Project Online from the outset, right? So some initial setup items, very quick, very quick. Uh, so first of all, you can say I'm logged in Project Online. What I'm gonna do is navigate to the gear, select PWA settings. And one thing you might wanna consider doing is navigate to this, under the look and feel as a quick launch. If I click on quick launch, you'll see this shows me the navigation along the left side of the pane here, right? Uh, one of the things you'll notice here is server settings. Server settings is actually PWA settings. If I want this to show up on the left-hand navigation, I can go ahead and click the checkbox here, select save and close. And what this enables me to do is actually, instead of clicking on the gear every time, then PWA settings, I'll have server settings here, which will just reduce my clicks by 50%, right? So instead of two clicks, gear, then PWA settings, all I can do is click directly on server settings, right? So it minimizes the number of clicks that I'm going to be clicking. Uh, and since I'm going to be setting up Project Web App, that's going to be a lot of clicks saved, right? Now, the next thing I want to do is click on additional server settings. And when I do this, there's going to be some settings in here we can take a look at, right? So do you create master projects and do you want to be able to save and publish them to the system? If you do, then you can leave this selected, right? Um, some other things that are specified here, resource capacity settings. This is just the tool's ability to, to um, determine capacity, right? Capacity utilization, demand, and so forth. Currently, it's specified by default to only generate going back one month and only forward 12 months. Yeah, you might want to consider going back more months uh, just for historical info. You might consider going farther than 12 months if you have projects that are longer in duration, right? So pretty simple stuff. You can specify 24 in the forward and 6 in the back. Whatever works for you, right? Just think about this for a little bit and consider what might be good for you. Um, task mode settings here, right? Do you want to allow manually scheduled tasks to be published to team members? Hmm. That's something to consider. And we'll talk about these later. But again, these are just some housekeeping items to set up initially with the project online setup. And then uh, lastly, turn on notifications. Do you want your project web app, project online system to be able to send email alerts to people on the system? If you do, click the checkbox, turn on notifications, then go ahead and click save. I'm gonna specify these, go back to 12 and six, click save. And now I'm going to have the ability to, you can see here, specify alerts and reminders for me as well as those individuals that report for me right so pretty cool stuff all right switching gears here okay with regard to the permissions modes within the system now let me go ahead and navigate to where you specify the permission mode change and that is within additional server settings permission management you can see that here there's sharepoint permission mode and project permission mode by default, Project Online is going to be set up in pro, uh, excuse me, SharePoint permission mode. In this mode, there are a set of SharePoint security groups granting users varying levels of access to projects and Project Online functionality. This, this mode, SharePoint permission mode, is considered more streamlined than Project Permission mode. Uh, I, you know, occasionally I'll call it the easy button implementation of security. Because again, you just add people to the groups. You can't change the permissions at all. You don't have to think about the permissions at all other than which group to add people to. What I mean by that is you can't tweak the permissions within the groups. You can't add additional groups. You just, what you have is what you use. Now, project permission mode, on the other hand, provides you a set of customizable security groups and other functionality, providing a high degree of configurable security. So consider for a minute, mm, you want, I don't know, certain project managers to be able to edit some projects, but not other projects. Maybe you don't even want them to be able to see other projects. But then again, you have other resources who should see and edit all projects, right? So there, there can be varying types of requirements with regard to visibility, editability, and even seeing it all. Uh, projects and resources. And then there might be scenarios based on reporting structures within the system too. These are all things that can be handled via project permission mode. Right. Um, so with regard to SharePoint permission mode, you know, what's what's good about it? 
Well, yeah, it's more streamlined, right? It's easier to use. And if you don't have complex permission requirements, it's pretty much a way to go, um, yeah, if you think about it. There's nothing to configure, really. It's just start adding users and let's go. What's not so good about it? Well, you're, you can't change the permissions. What you have is what you've got and what you're pretty much stuck with. You can't do anything. You cannot provide the ability to constrain visibility of projects and resources based on reporting structure. So it, it's really not highly configurable and good for situations where you're going to want to be able to uh, get down to kind of finite visibility and editability of project and resources. Let's take a look at uh, project permission mode. What's good about it? It's really pretty much infinitely configurable. It can provide for many different possible scenarios with regard to view versus edit versus not visible at all. There are also scenarios that can be handled based on reporting structure, meaning this resource reports to that resource. These resources are in different departments. All those types of scenarios can be handled within this security. Um, you can change individual permissions for each group. You can create additional groups, each, create individual security categories. There's much you can do. And then uh, another really, really cool piece of functionality is delegate functionality. What is delegate functionality? Well, that's where, uh, let's say for instance, so-and-so is going on vacation next week. What are we gonna do? How's that person gonna submit their timesheet? Well, you can actually create a delegate and then somebody can log in as that user while they're on vacation and enter their time and submit it for them. Now, okay, timesheet's just one simple example. Uh, just think somebody's on vacation and you want to be able to log in and do whatever it is they do for them while they're out. Well, that's what delegate works, okay? So it's a great piece of functionality. What is the downside of project permission mode? Mm, it's definitely a little more complex to set up, right? So that's something to consider as well. Uh, so how do you switch the modes? Well, <laughs> pretty simple stuff. Uh, you can see that I am in additional server settings right here right now. And all I have to do here is change the permission management from SharePoint permission mode to project permission mode, or if I'm in project, I switch the radio button from project to SharePoint. When I do that, I click save, and that will go ahead and change the permission mode in the system, right? And that's pretty simple stuff, right? So hopefully that helped you understand a little bit about the modes, which you may want to choose, and when you want to choose one over the other. Over the next section, adding users, we're gonna go over the scenarios of adding users in either SharePoint or project permission mode. And um, yeah, different ways to do that. Hope folks learned a little bit from this. Let us know if there's anything else you wanna see. Thanks so much. This is Dan, bye.